trigger warning if you are prone to mental health or talking about it because it's pretty intense. Everybody struggles with mental health the same way everybody struggles with physical health. So looking back, obviously that was mania. And I remember the look on my brother's face, he was so scared. Then I was in the psych ward for a month. It just felt very like, whoa, you know, what has my life come to? And I remember thinking, okay, I'm this diagnosed person now. I'm gonna have to live with this bipolar disorder my whole life. I just had to find my balance and that was a journey that I had to be in by myself. Hey guys, welcome to Self Care Sundays with Sophia, where we talk about self-love, self-growth, and everything in between. Today's video is probably gonna get really heavy, so trigger warning if you are prone to mental health or talking about it. I mean, it probably will help you if you struggle with some of the same things that I did, so I'm gonna be very vulnerable and open up about the things I've experienced, because it's pretty intense. I'm gonna start by saying um, I'm 31 now, and I guess it all well my whole life i had struggled i the only time i was diagnosed and learned that i had a different brain was when i was 18. i graduated high school and a couple months after high school i had a psychotic episode and i was in the hospital for a month so it was very traumatic and that was in the year 2000 so to be honest mental health stuff wasn't as known, like the remedies that we have now. It was way more of like a label back then, whereas now we've kind of learned that everybody struggles with mental health the same way everybody struggles with physical health. If you have an owie, you fix it. Sometimes it's for life. Everybody's journey is different, right? Nobody heals the exact same. If you break your leg, you might have broken a different place or your body heals faster. Do you know what I mean? I just want to encourage anybody that's still kind of in that mindset that don't get torn up by labels because it doesn't really mean anything. And I've actually found ways to benefit off of my mental health brain. So I'm going to share that with you and get in deeper. Basically, after I graduated high school, I was feeling incredible. I was on top of the world. I was working in a restaurant. I had just gotten into a good gym routine. I was working out like be at the gym for like hours at a time and like barely eating, barely sleeping. I had all this energy. So looking back, obviously that was mania, right? Mind you, at the time I was smoking a lot of weed, so that didn't help. And I was also drinking a lot of caffeine, which I don't think my brain was ready for. So basically what had happened is I, cold turkey stopped smoking weed and I didn't sleep for three days. Um, I remember that movie Paranormal Activity. I saw it in theaters and I, was so afraid of that. And I think that was kind of like the psychosis brewing in my brain. I just felt it was a really like weird situation where I almost thought that movie tipped me off the edge at the time. By day three, I hadn't slept yet. And um, I was actually living with my best friend and her family at the time. Her parents were like, Sophia, you know, you gotta get to sleep. And I was convinced that Basically, if you're a Christian and you know what Judgment Day is, that's what I thought was happening. Earlier in the day, by day three, no sleep, I was working the hostess job at the restaurant and people were coming in and I remember there was a bar side and there was a restaurant side and you would always ask, hello, welcome, would you like to sit on the bar side or the restaurant side? And everybody that chose the bar side, I thought that meant they were going to hell and the restaurant side, they were going to heaven. So I was like, thought I was in on this secret and I remember my coworkers uh, or my boss or somebody called my dad saying, hey, something's off with Sophia. And I remember two of my friends came into the restaurant that day and I remember the look on their face. So that everybody kind of knew something was up. And my dad called me while I was at work and I thought he was calling me from heaven. The delusions were starting. Later that night, I went back home to my best friend's house uh, with her family and they were trying to get me to go to bed and they were really concerned. And then it got to the point where they thought, okay, something's not right, we got a call. 911, right? First, the police came for some reason. I don't know why, but I was explaining to the police that, oh yeah, sorry, my best friend, her younger brother, I didn't want him to go to sleep because I knew their family. They weren't really Christians in the way that my family was raised. My dad was a pastor and we didn't go to church as much, different story, but uh, later on, but generally I had that belief and I was, I didn't want my best friend's little brother to go to bed because I thought he was going to go to hell. So I was telling the police this and they were taking notes and I thought I could help everybody. Then it got to a point where um, the ambulance had came and I was basically going nuts. They had to wrestle with me to get me into the ambulance car. And there was like quite a few men, like the adrenaline was going, right? So I remember they were trying to get me to go in there. And then finally I went into the ambulance and 
keep in mind too, a lot of people don't remember their psychotic breaks. I, for some reason, remember everything. So that's why this story is so interesting for me to tell because it was so extreme. I remember being in the bed in the ambulance truck and the guy working, the paramedic, he had this look in his eyes. I thought it was the devil. And they had to give me that thing to check my pulse and I didn't want to give it to them because I thought that was gonna zap me and kill me because I knew I was kind of going nuts. Finally, we got to the hospital. My dad and my brother were there and I remember the look on my brother's face. He was so scared and the doctor came and they were trying to get me to take this pill to help me fall asleep. And my dad was like praying for me, you know, pastor dad. He was telling me, just let go, let go. And I thought that pill was gonna kill me. And I actually, I don't know if this really happened or not, but I think it did. I remember the doctor saying to me like, please just take the pill, please. Somebody's having like a heart attack. I have to go to them. That wouldn't make sense if it was a psych doctor. Anyway, whatever. I just remember I really didn't want to take it, but I did. And then I woke up and I think I had slept for like two days or something crazy like that, they said. and. Uh, I had to go to the bathroom so I got up and the nurse was there and she helped me go to the bathroom and I went into the bathroom and I guess I'd fainted because the nurse came in and helped me and rolled me on a wheel wheelchair then I was in the psych ward for a month that was interesting because I was just turned 18 I was in the adult psych ward and that was with people that were on drugs so honestly it was pretty scary there were some people I could talk to but generally it just felt very like whoa, you know, what does my life come to? Of course they put me on lithium, which I think is kind of a standard. They always put you on that. And that, I'm sure it works for some people, but I don't know, that just zonked me right out. And I, I remember actually after the hospital being on five different medications, antipsychotic, mood stabilizer, um, anti-anxiety, uh, maybe it was just four. And then Ativan for panic attacks, I don't know, but it was, I was very heavily over medicated. And I actually remember the going in for like a follow-up appointment and the psychiatrist saying to me like, oh, what do you feel? Normally your body can tell you what you feel. And I was just like a zombie. I was so out of it. And she's like, oh, do you think you need more of this drug? And I was like, yeah, sure. Like, so then she upped my dose on the one pill. It's like, I don't know what this is. I'm an 18 year old, right? Mind you, when that happened, I gained about 60 pounds. Uh, I basically forgot how to do everything, which is so weird. I remember being, when I was in the hospital for the month stay, I didn't know how to cut cutlery. Like it was so traumatic that I basically had to relearn how to live. And I remember when I came out of the hospital, I didn't know how to do my makeup anymore. And that's something I've always been really passionate about. It was really sad. I remember seeing the looks on my family and friends' face. They were like, whoa, okay, Sophia gonna be like this forever? Because mind you, they're used to me being you know, I was just manic on top of the world, blabbing, miss outgoing, and suddenly I was mute. It took away all of my personality. It was very intense. I was over medicated like that for about a year. And then I got to a point, I was sleeping like 14 hours a night too. It got to a point where I was so bored with life. I looked forward to going to bed because I would have these really intense lucid dreams. I remember just like waking up being like, oh, oh no, another like eight hours till I can go to bed. And it was no way to live. Nobody really knew at the time. My family was new to it and, oh, you know, you're still getting used to the medications. It'll get better. Didn't get better. Honestly, a lot of people, I lost kind of some friendships because I wasn't myself. And I remember thinking, okay, I'm this diagnosed person now. I'm gonna have to live with this bipolar disorder my whole life. My whole life is different. I had enough. I was like, okay, I'm done. I just cold turkey went off everything, which is so not recommended to do. But I did it because I just didn't care anymore. Within one month, I shot back up manic. All the weight fell off. I was like doing modeling, runway shows, crappy little Vancouver ones. I felt like I got my mojo back. I started dating this guy. We dated for four years, great guy. He was there for me while I was manic. So it was about six months I stayed that manic for. And then I started to kind of crash and burn again where I started to get a little bit too delusional. So then I thought, okay, I probably need to go back on medication. So I went back on a medication and it did the same thing. It was a way less dose. My personality immediately, like it gave me social anxiety. I was quiet. And thankfully my boyfriend was so supportive, but my life kind of went down again. Honestly, it, it was probably like a 10, 15 year battle of finding my balance. Like there's been years where I've been on medication, off medication. Right now I'm off, I've been off for a few years. I've learned with my mental health, I've been able to balance it with lifestyle, mental health, what I'm putting into my body, balancing everything. 
I just want to say if you're going through that, it will get better. Listen to the doctor. I'm sure there's so many videos online now about things you can do, but I didn't really take seriously the whole like get proper sleep, don't have caffeine or little things like that that were so severe and could have I could have gotten it together sooner if I had done that. There was a period in 2017 I had just came back from filming a reality show Wags in LA and for some reason that triggered a depression so great that I was so depressed and again I was smoking so much weed I realized that I'm the type of person that with weed I, it's all or nothing. <laughs> so I haven't smoked in almost four years now and I've been better than ever. I exercise regularly, I eat semi-clean, I drink a lot of water, I I have daily routines that keep me balanced and I ultimately, I know what it feels like if, I haven't been manic in years, but if I were to start to be manic again, I know the signs. See, that's the thing with mental health is you can kind of catch it if you feel yourself dropping, you know, okay, maybe I need to be on an antidepressant for a bit. One thing to remember is that at least for me, nothing was set in stone forever the rest of my life. Nothing was permanent. I just had to find my balance and that was a journey that I had to be in by myself because nobody could tell me what I needed. You know, they do, they measure your blood, how much medications in your system, but those guidelines I think aren't really that accurate because ultimately you go with how you feel. I am really happy to say that I've been stable for quite a few years now and life is so good. I just remember when I was in the hospital in the psych ward for that month thinking that for the rest of my life I was a disabled person or I was, but life was going to be a lot harder for me forever and there was way bigger of a stigma about it back then. I don't know why but I've always been super open about it like even back then I would talk to everybody about it and I remember I had a friend that said to me like oh please don't tell anybody but I'm on antidepressants and I was like okay, I'm on like four different meds, like who cares? I'm really happy that it's more normalized now because there's just more information. One thing back then that I did, which I found really helped, I was in a support group for people around my age that had psychosis. And this one guy actually I went to high school with, he was a year older than me, but he was like sort of my friend in high school. So that was kind of nice to have him there. It's really nice talking to other people about their experiences too. It just makes you feel less alone helps you learn and grow. I'm very grateful for that. One thing I want to say, I am such an advocate for therapy. I think everybody, mental health issues or not, I think everybody should speak to somebody, a professional, somebody who, well, first of all, legally, they can't repeat your secrets. Also having somebody that doesn't have an emotional attachment to you or a biased opinion, they can give you input and they can kind of give you tools that they're trained to do. Therapy has saved my life. I actually was seeing a therapist. I think it first time I went, my parents took me to this Christian therapist lady when I was in like grade two or three, around the time they divorced. And then my high school counselor, she was amazing. She like saved my life in high school. I would be in her office like every day. Lots of help there. And over the years I've paid for therapists. And now I have a therapist that I've seen for probably like five, six years. And I'll do check-ins like once every six months, but generally I feel like I'm just updating her on how great life is. But you know, people say, oh, when you're doing good, that's when you need therapy the most. I don't know. I think I'm pretty honest with myself and I'm very self-aware. So for me, I'll do the check-in once every while, but generally I'm pretty good right now. That's not to say, you know, life is a journey. There's always gonna be things that come up, new struggles that you have to deal with. So therapy, 100% all the way, life-changing. What else can I say about mental health? I guess that's kind of like the dirty deets of it, like the super intense stuff. I just wanted to share with you my experience with psychosis, bipolar. Oh, by the way, the amount of labels I got diagnosed, bipolar, anxiety, borderline personality disorder, I had insomnia, all these labels that I had, it's not forever. And if it is, who cares? Somebody has heart disease, obviously they're gonna wanna take their heart medication so they can function and be happy. I mean, the goal of, if medication works for you, the goal is to feel happy and feel good. So why wouldn't you wanna take that, right? So I've always kind of never understood when people wanted, were sort of against medication because it just helps you balance. And I think the key to life and happiness is keeping a good balance. That's all for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find me on all my social medias at Sophia Pearson. We'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye.